Before we start this video, I want to make something perfectly clear. I don't think the medium of Assassin's Creed works as an RPG, or at least doesn't work anywhere near as well as it did as an action-adventure open world. Locations, characters, story, and overall writing were elevated by its originally unique open world style. The older games would last around 20 hours of playtime. The newer games have taken a completely different turn, now mainly consisting of an open world that, sure, looks pretty, but lacks any sense of realism. An empty shell full of nothingness side activities. You could argue that, for example, Valhalla's storyline was epic and well written. The main hitting points of the story are great, I won't deny that. That heart-wrenching opening, the momentary tension between factions in England, and that ending. Wow. But notice how about five seconds ago I said momentary tension. That's all Valhalla's story is. Momentary in the midst of a bloated tale of filler. Eivor's brother has gone missing. God knows what his captors are doing to him. And Eivor seems as if there is nothing more important right now than to reclaim Sigurd back onto his Raven Clan throne. But let's first conquer about three more regions of England and then bother to get Sigurd back. I hear Chaelbert is due some lessons in brutal murder. <laughs> I don't like the RPG style of Assassin's Creed games because they, so far, have been hundreds of hours for the sake of being hundreds of hours, taking away from good writing and turning what could have been a memorable experience into a forgettable mess. But with the imminent release of Assassin's Creed Infinity, a live service hub that will go on to host all future AC games following Mirage, along with the major success of AC Odyssey and Valhalla, it is clear to me that these pseudo RPG Assassin's Creed games are here to stay. Now I know that I'm just a tiny channel with only 1,000 subscribers, but I feel that if there's even a small chance that anyone at Ubisoft could ever see this video, then there's also a small chance that it could inspire change for the better in their games. And a small chance is better than no chance in my books. So with that being said, today I'd like to talk about what my ideal Assassin's Creed game would look like if it had to be an RPG. This is just what I personally would do, it is my opinion. If any of you disagree, that's completely fine. We're not all robots that have to conform to one opinion, so I'd love to hear your own thoughts in the comments. This approach to a different RPG style that I'm taking is based off of a way to remedy Ubisoft's current issue with creating open worlds that are way too big with nothing to do, as well as allowing good writing to shine while still allowing for dialogue choices and such. Dragon Age Origins is a game ripe with meaningful characters, quests, locations, and more. The majority of quests pose a multitude of choices that will affect the outcome of the story and your influence of the characters around you. The world is vast and full of adventure waiting for you to stumble across. While the world is massive, it consists of multiple hub-based locations connected between loading screens. Now I started by mentioning Dragon Age, but this is the most prevalent format of all of developer Bioware's games in recent years. If Ubisoft are to continue making RPG Assassin's Creed games, I think this format could suit the series best. One way to counter Ubisoft's empty, overbearing open-world problem is to overhaul their approach completely. With the upcoming AC codename Red, for example, perhaps each region of Japan could be its own contained open world. Tokugawa could be an area with a few villages, a city or town with its own unique vibe, while the island of Chosokabe, being many miles south, has a much different look and feel to match with a slightly different way of life. These different hub worlds could have many quests and characters varying greatly from one another, making for nicely paced gameplay and a more memorable experience. Having different locations separated by a loading screen can give developers more freedom to include a lot more content in their worlds, as a smaller open world space takes a lot less processing power. Another game that approaches this direction of open world and succeeds is The Witcher 3. While not residing in the same open world space, Novigrad feels just as part of the same world as Beauclair. And this wouldn't be something unheard of for the Assassin's Creed series. AC 1 and 2 had multiple cities to explore independent of one another, joined by a larger, explorable area leading to each city between loading screens. Ubisoft, we need a fleshed out open world with things to do, not a pretty wasteland. Mm -hmm. 
One of Odyssey's biggest problems was its lack of defined character traits for its protagonists. You have the choice to be an absolute angel, and then one sentence later you can decide to be the biggest piece of shit for no reason. This isn't a deep thought out dialogue system. This is the writers not having a clear idea of the kind of character they want to portray because choice. And so give the player the option to flip flop between good and evil. That's cool, but it harms the overall writing of the game, placing your character as more of an emotional reactive to a situation rather than weaving the protagonist into the said scenario. Having no base character traits also hinders the player's ability to become attached or care in any way with what happens to them. Geralt of Rivia on the surface is a monotone, menacing, mean, menacious man, but deep down he's a kind, keen, kindred spirit to many around him. Now I know this to be the case with Geralt because of his set character traits. What I'm getting at is, the dialogue choices I had to choose from playing as Geralt always matched his personality. One choice could be drastically different from another, but would still always make sense to who the Witcher is at his core, his values, and his demeanour. You may be thinking of games such as Skyrim or Bioware's Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, where you can choose to be a good guy, an evil guy, or anywhere in between. And those games work great, right? Yes, they do. And that's because they have no pre-existing character. You create your own character that can be whoever you want them to be. They have no voice because it is your voice. You are your character but you are not Cassandra or Alexios. They are who they are and have had experiences before you step into their boots, so by default need to have pre-existing character traits. If the games after Mirage are going to include dialogue choices, then please Ubisoft, come up with your main character's personality and morals before you come up with dialogue choices for your game. Now we've just talked a lot about dialogue choices. Choices mean nothing if they do not affect your game in any way. A lot of the things Cassandra and Ava would say would in most cases not lead to any change in the way the characters react and perceive you or in how the story plays out. Knowing my choices didn't really mean much in the grand scale of things, I would always end up just tapping A to choose whatever dialogue choice came up first without even reading it. In games like The Witcher 3 and KOTOR, I've already mentioned them so I might as well keep using them as examples. If I choose to say or do specific things throughout my playthrough without thinking or caring, I could quickly result in game-changing outcomes that I may not have wanted. So when playing, I would always be alert as to what choices to make and this would greatly improve my enjoyment of the game and lead me into multiple playthroughs throughout the years. Now all this talking of choice leads me into gender choices. If you are the character, like in Skyrim, then it works just fine. But when, like in Odyssey and Valhalla, you are playing as a pre-existing protagonist, a gender choice can harm the writing of the game because things have to be very broad and almost base value in order to make sense with either gender choice. Now before you start saying, I am white toxic male who hate all women, I would love a female protagonist in an upcoming Assassin's Creed game. But Ubisoft needs to make her the one and only gender in the game so the writers can actually establish and flesh out a real strong female lead. Ubisoft, we need thought out characters with thought out choices that affect the outcome of the game. I'll admit, Valhalla was not as egregious as Odyssey with this, but I think for the sake of Assassin's Creed's future, it still needs to be said. Don't force the player to go out of their way and off the beaten path. The perfect exploration in any game is when you decide when, where, and if you do it. When a game, <coughs> Od Odyssey, <coughs> sorry, uh, caps main quest at such a high level that you're forced to clear endless bandit camps and complete fetch quests, the desire to press on to the next main quest can quickly start to lose its appeal. I've praised The Witcher 3 a lot, while it also contains level requirements for quests, but as you would progress, you would naturally be at the level needed as and when you unlocked each next main quest. Sometimes going off and completing side quests and activities first could make the next main quest easier, but without doing so, you could still progress. The next main quest wasn't so highly level caps that you absolutely had to do other things for hours on end first, like with Odyssey. You chose to spend hours exploring and completing side quests in The Witcher 3 because they were good. While we're on this note, fetch quests are boring no matter how much you dress them up. 
Having a goofy character asking you to find and deliver him a wacky golden helmet made by his one-legged brother is still a fetch quest. When few and far between, I think fetch quests are fine. Maybe after helping the goofy man, you later unlock access to a quest where the goofy man has an argument with his one-legged brother because if it wasn't for him, he wouldn't be one-legged in the first place. And you have to figure out with dialogue choices how to stop the fight. But if almost every side quest in a game are straightforward fetch quests, and on top of that, the level cap forces you to do a ton of them, it isn't any fun. Ubisoft, we need enjoyable, varying side quests and activities that aren't pushed in our face. Let us do things at our own pace. I do have a few more less gameplay mechanic, more content points I think needs saying, but I'll leave them for a future video I'm planning because I think they'll fit a lot better there. So there you have it. I think these are the most vital things Ubisoft need to work on if they are to make a good Assassin's Creed RPG. I hope that Mirage can show Ubisoft that not everything needs to be a massive RPG, but honestly, as I said at the beginning of the video, it looks as if the RPG format is here to stay. Ubisoft, I'm not here to hate and put your work down. I'm here to provide constructive criticism in the hopes that the Assassin's Creed series will improve. I am but one voice in the sea of thousands of others, though I feel that it needs to be heard, as in reality, this small voice echoes the bellow of a community that only strives for the best from a beloved series. If you did enjoy this video and agree with any of the points I made, then by pressing the subscribe button, you will be joining a larger community that shares the same love for Assassin's Creed as you do. May the father of understanding guide us. I will see you soon. Goodbye.